volume lights everywhere. That is insane. And welcome to yet another tutorial. Today we're gonna be talking about how to create volumetric lighting in Blender. And here is a row lighting setup in Blender and the volumetric lighting setup that is 100% better. And as usual, Gleb Alexandrov here for Creative Shrimp, the place where artists learn tips and tricks about computer graphics and coffee. It's crucial to learn volume shaders in Blender, because you can create fog using volume shaders, you can create aerial perspective light shafts, so-called god rays or corpuscular rays. So, in general, it will open up a new perspective on lighting for you. So let's jump into the tutorial and the first thing that we're gonna do is to add a directional light. I'll demonstrate these effects on the example of the attic that I've made not so long ago. And first I'm gonna add a sun lamp. I'll keep the size of the sun lamp very low, so we'll see the sharp shadows. Yeah, and what's even more important, we'll see very focused light rays. These effects are usually called the light shafts. Also, you can set the bounces to 1 to reduce the render times and to reduce the noise. You don't need that second bounce anyway. Alright, and the next thing will be to add the volume scatter material. Let's get started by creating a cube and disabling it in the viewport. You don't need to see it in the viewport, so set the drawing mode to wire. Of course, it will be still visible in the render. Ok, let's add a volume material and first of all delete the basic diffuse shader and add a volume scatter shader. Now let's plug in this shader into material output. Ta-da! Champagne! You have the volume light in your scene, congrats! Now let's tweak uh, the density parameter and it's very easy to explain, this parameter controls how thick is the volume. Not the rocket science, yeah? And now is the time for rocket science. Well, let's explore some technical stuff like variable density and volume absorption. The stuff for real nerds. Variable density means that you can plug the texture in the volume density input. For example, the Mosgrave procedural texture. Uh, because by default uh, the volume is uniform. It has the same density in all points of it. So here I'm adding the Musgrave texture and I'm plugging it in into the density input of the volume scatter shader. I cranking up the details so you can see it better. Here you can see how uh, the procedural noise, the Musgrave noise, affects the density of the volume scatter. And you can create a smoke this way, the dust, every other volumetric material if you need it. And the quality of the volumetric rendering of Heterogeneous volumes is controlled by the step size. Basically, the larger the step size, the less details will have the volume, but it will render much faster. And here is another nerd trick for you. You can add uh, the volume absorption shader on top of the volume scatter. It means that the light rays will not only be scattered, but it will be absorbed by the volume as well. And if you want to be using the variable density textures, don't forget to turn on the homogeneous volume. And you can see that volume absorption adds a little bit of absorption. Well, fair enough. It's looking fantastic, let's move to the next point. Let's create a light pattern. Because to create a gorgeous volumetric lighting, you often need to have a very interesting light pattern or light throw. I've set up the ceiling of the attic this way, so I have these wooden blocks, but I have the plane behind them as well. And I'm gonna apply this texture to the plane as a mix factor between wooden material and the transparent shader. It will allow me to create the holes in the ceiling procedurally. Now I'm gonna apply the black and white texture in the mix factor input. I even have a separate UV channel for this map, just for fun, so I can unwrap it separately. And on top of everything, I apply the color ramp to tweak the contrast of the map. You can see how we created nice light shafts. I'm very excited to see this effect working for us. It's gorgeous. And by tweaking the mapping node, we control the damage of the ceiling. And once again, the color ramp node is used to control the contrast. Isn't that flipping awesome? 
It is. It is, my friend. I rendered this guy at 100 samples. It's still noisy, but we'll solve this problem later on. Alright, we created very sharp, very harsh, very pronounced light shaft. Now let's add a soft light, soft area light to simulate the aerial perspective. Because it's much more interesting, much more rich when you have a soft scattering as well as the sharp god rays. I'm creating the plane with the emissive shader and I'm gonna turn off the camera visibility and the shadow visibility so it won't be visible in the camera and won't cast the shadows. Oh boy, take a look how smooth and how noise free is the render. The same amount of samples. Because cycles prefer the large light sources. In other words, it tends to produce the much less noise with the larger light sources. Alright, we're getting closer to the final look. Let's tweak the anisotropy value. And it's very hard to explain, honestly. As I explain it to myself, it's the fall off of the volumetric scattering. It's kind of a direction in which the light is scattered. So if you crank up the anisotropy to 1.95, you see how the atmosphere shifted toward the light source. And at the same time, you'll see how the god rays disappeared at all. Now it looks like a soft glow or a glare effect in Blender Compositor. So far so good, we created our volume light, but how the heck I can render it without noise, you may ask? There are at least three ways to use the branched path tracing, to use the clamp, and to use the image editor like GIMP to denoise the picture. First, let's explore the branched path tracing. When you switch to branched path tracing, you'll notice right away uh, that there are different kind of samples. The diffuse, the glossy, we'll need the volume samples, obviously. Because our main problem is to render the volume light without the noise. So, our volume samples are multiplied by the anti-aliasing samples, it become 1020 samples for volume. And here's another trick for you, set clamp in direct uh, to some insanely low value, like 0 0.2. Uh, that will help to reduce the noise that comes from bounce diffuse lighting. Rock and roll, let's render it out, and you can see how branch path tracing produced less noisy result in the same 6 minutes time frame. That's incredible! And here is an alternative way to reduce the noise using GIMP image editor and the gimmick plugin. Select filters gimmick, scroll down to Ian Ferguson folder and select MSC Noise 2 filter. You can preview the result in this small window right here and uh, let's just press OK and straight out of the box we see the brilliant noise reduction. Works like a charm, try it out, you'll be impressed, I promise. Alright, fine, and as a finishing touch you can add even more noise to your image using the dust particles in the post-processing. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, that was Gleb Alexandrov for creativeshrimp.com and press this button to subscribe, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll change the world of computer graphics. Mm -hmm. Alright.